it's Ashton. And it is John. What is up, Sub Sandwiches? We are back again with another reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be watching... One of our Harriers... Is that how you say it? You know, I don't know. I think so. Is missing the 1983 Alvarego incident by the channel Mark Felton Productions. Make sure yes. you guys go and subscribe if you enjoy this video. The link is down in the description. Very important to support channels you love, guys. A suggestion from David Hall. David Hall... Thank you so much. Uh, I thought you might find this amusing. Uh, these aircrafts are now only in service with the U.S. Marines and Spanish Navy. One of the Harriers is missing, so it's a U.S. and Spanish carrier, okay? You guys can also help support the channel if you click on that link down below in the description and throw down through Streamlabs. You can let you pick one of the next videos that we react to. Keep it under 10 minutes. Include the video's link, tell your email. Now, let's see. Oh, it's missing. Dude, that's crazy. Is that a vertical takeoff? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn. Have you seen how that works? My only knowledge of that comes from San Andreas, where they have the jets backward, but then they can turn down, yeah. and they shoot up as they go forward then. I it's... feel like that'd be, like, the only way. Right. In 1982, Britain and Argentina went to war over the Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic. <laughs> For the British public, one of the stars of the conflict was the Royal Navy's Sea Harrier, short takeoff and vertical landing fighter that served That's aboard dope. the aircraft carriers HMS Invincible and Hermes. This doughty aircraft, a marvel of British engineering, that was first introduced into fleet air arms service in 1978, shot down 20 Argentine aircraft in the Falklands War, while only two Sea Harriers were lost, both to enemy ground fire. Wow. A year after the Falklands, the Sea Harrier once again hit the headlines, but not because of a war, but because of a rather extraordinary airborne emergency. One of the Falklands War aircraft carriers, HMS Invincible, was lead ship of a class of three light carriers serving with the Royal Navy in 1983. One of her sister ships, HMS Illustrious, was in June 1983 operating off the coast of Portugal taking part in a NATO exercise. Aboard was 801 Naval Air Squadron, which had seen active service in the Falklands aboard Hermes, flying the Sea Harrier FRS-1. Sub-Lieutenant Ian Soapy Watson was a new pilot flying a Harrier for his 14th sortie. Paired with a more experienced pilot, Soapy Watson was sent on a mission to locate a French aircraft carrier under simulated combat conditions. Flying under radio silence and with radars off, the pair of Sea Harriers split up to search the area, switched on their radars, and swept separate zones. His search over, Watson descended to rejoin his flight leader, but he never turned up. Watson decided to head for Illustrious, using his radio and radar. Nothing. He squawked emergency. Still, he couldn't locate Illustrious, and his radio had seriously malfunctioned. Glancing at his fuel gauges, Watson was seriously concerned. He knew that an international shipping lane lay to his east. He turned towards it, his radar picking up a ship 50 miles away. Heading for it, Watson saw the ship from 12 miles. By now, he had only a few minutes of flight time left. Jesus, he quickly formulated a plan. He would make a pass over the ship to make sure the crew saw him, then eject from the Harrier and be rescued. The ship was a Spanish container ship called the Alrego. As Watson made a slow pass over the ship, he could see that the cargo containers were stacked, forming a sort of flight deck. The Harrier's ability to hover and make a controlled descent now came into play. Instead oh, wow. of ditching the multi-million pound fighter in the drink, Watson instead decided to land the Harrier on top of the metal crates. With hardly any fuel left, Watson managed to bring the Harrier down onto one of the crates, but the plane started to slip backwards. Watson attempted to retract the gear, but with a thump, the main gear dropped off the back edge of the container. 
The only thing that stopped the Harrier from sliding off the ship altogether into the ocean was a florist's van parked beneath the container. Wow. The Harrier's tail crunched down onto the roof, but then stopped sliding backwards. The El Rego had just become the world's smallest aircraft carrier. The captain <laughs> coolly cool. notified the British that the Sea Harrier and Sub Lieutenant Watson would be safely delivered to Santa Cruz de Tenerife in the Canary Islands in four days' time. That the carrier is probably the... so happy because they're like, they're going to pay fucking dearly for damaging anything on here. Mm -hmm. Rego in That's pretty cool though, how it can land so circus. nicely. The crew of the El Rego filed a salvage claim for the aircraft, and the British Ministry of Defense paid them £570,000 compensation. As for Sophie Watson, a board of inquiry found that it was not his fault. He had only completed 75% of his training and had been issued with an aircraft with a faulty radio. Oh, oh shit. Well, Lieutenant Ian Watson at last came down the gangway to confirm that he was in good shape despite his nerve-wracking experience. Um, I lost navigation equipment trying to find my way back to the ship and therefore became lost and uncertain of position. Uh, trying to call them on the radio, I had no success and therefore set up a search trying to find the ship. Uh, as the fuel was getting low, I realized it was futile and uh, picked this ship out of the only one around. There were no other uh, ships available? Nothing else, no. And how much fuel did you have left? I have uh, maybe one minute, one minute's fine. That's when you got to this ship? Yeah. What was going through your mind as it was hovering overhead and you were presumably looking down? Um, I'd just seen a, a place to land and that was my only uh, intention at that time, was just put the aircraft down as safely as possible. It's a very, very small place. Did you, you must have doubted your ability to put it down on there. The training we received is pretty good, but uh, even so it's small, yes. And I think I was fairly lucky to land it as well as I did. That's he awesome. had, after all, saved a very expensive aircraft. He received a reprimand and was assigned to a desk job. He returned to flying, acquiring 2,000 hours in Sea Harriers and 900 in the FA-18 Hornet before leaving the Navy in 1996. As for the Harrier, it still exists. Retired from service in 2003, the aircraft in its updated FA-2 configuration is on display at the Newark Air Museum, Nottinghamshire in England. That's cool. It's really Many cool. thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. It's a really nice plane for its time too. Yeah, for what, sure. They made it in like the late 70s, it said, and it was able to do a vertical takeoff like that and land like that. That's pretty impressive. And plus that guy not having all the experience. I'd be pissed at my commanding yeah. officer or anybody. It's like, you guys give me a faulty radio or I'm training to use this goddamn thing. I could have died out there, ran out of right. gas, and you just... He got lucky, though. Yeah. He landed it so well and managed somehow just that van, you know, yep. that was right at the ass end. Because even if he would have ejected, if there wasn't a boat or something for him to get to, he just would have sat in the water until he I died. Know. In Middle that, of the ocean? That's, Come on. like, understandable, too. Like, the people who are on the... You know the ship. It's like, mm -hmm. well, and he could have just ejected over the boat and cost them millions and millions of dollars. Be like, you know, I'm gonna try to land this ship. Yeah. Props, guys. Uh, go check out the channel that is Mark Felton Productions. Link is down below. And peace out, mm -hmm. fam.